Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. On a previous episode, I actually did a how-to on how you can use Linux to save your old Windows machines and keep them from ending up in a trash bin. And specifically, what I did was I showed you how to take Linux Mint 18 and Ubuntu Mate and to put it on older Windows machines. And what I did was I took Linux Mint 18 and I put it on this old Toshiba laptop, which previously had Windows 10 and prior to that it had Windows 8.1. And this laptop, just make a correction, it was actually three years old, okay? So not too old, but still an old machine as um, to compare to today's machines. And then the second one was a really, really old machine. This was actually a former Windows Vista desktop. So I'm pretty sure this is about 10 years old or maybe more. And I was successful in installing Linux Mint 18 on the laptop. However, I was not successful on installing Ubuntu Mate. And I do want to first thank you for all the people who are leaving comments on how I could solve this problem potentially with the Windows Vista desktop. And when I have time, I'm going to go ahead and try that. However, I really, really feel it is the hard drive. But um, I've got a really good comments on people who were talking about using a plop program where you could inst uh, you know, force these old machines to install Linux from a USB stick. So I'll do a follow-up episode on that later when I have time to do it. Now the follow-up that I wanted to do today was actually on this former Windows 10 laptop where I put Linux Mint 18. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I found that were actually quote-unquote broken and also some of my initial uh, experiences or maybe it's a mini review of Linux Mint 18. Now before I get any further, I do want to talk briefly about the Linux videos that I'm making. If I haven't mentioned it before, a lot of my user tutorial, a lot of my videos are from a regular user point of view. You know, like basically I target Windows and Mac users, primarily Windows 10 users. And so these are for people who just want a different operating system or an alternative for their everyday uses. Okay, so um, if you are a really Linux based guru or a tech head, then probably this is not something that is new for you. However, I really, really do appreciate all the comments and all the help that you are providing because I really feel that a lot of people who are new to Linux, they are very afraid. I would definitely say that because I was there myself. And now having a community of people around who are freely giving you their expertise and help, it is huge. And now our Linux community is so much larger than it was when I started using Linux for like 10 years ago. That's when I first started using Linux. And so a lot of my use for Linux, as you've probably seen, is as an everyday user. And when I first started using Linux, I really tinkered around. I played around with a lot of distros. I broke a lot of things. But nowadays, you know, that just takes a lot of time. And I just want to use my computer and not use Windows. So uh, that's basically the way I use Linux. But I do once again want to thank you, everybody in the Linux community or people who just enjoy Linux in leaving their comments below. And I also definitely want to thank you people who have not used Linux yet, but who are considering making the move. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about my experience with Linux Mint 18. Okay, I've had some time to play around with Linux Mint 18 and now I am ready to leave my impressions and a mini review. And if you haven't seen it, I did an episode where I talked about so many different versions of Linux and the reason why I am using Linux Mint 17.3 and why I'm not upgrading to Linux Mint 18. Now for me, I do not like to update, upgrade versions of Linux very often for a few reasons. First and foremost, whenever you have a brand new version of an operating system, regardless of which platform you have, usually there's gonna be bugs that still have to be worked out, okay? So you might have weird bugs, you might have stability issues, and that's something that I really don't like to have to go through every single time I upgrade to a new version. And the second thing is, as I've also stated before, is that Linux Mint 18 really did not have any new features that made it a must-have upgrade. For the most part, it's basically just like Linux Mint 17.3. I would say 99% of it is just like using Linux Mint 17.3. So I really did not see a need to actually upgrade to Linux Mint 18, okay? So with that being said, let me talk about a few things that um, I don't like about this version. The first one is actually a big one. So every now and then, my mouse randomly disappears, okay? 
And then also every now and then I have these weird flickers on my screen and these scan lines appear on my screen. So that is really, really bad. And like I said, it happens randomly. So I did a little bit of research and I found out that it could possibly be because of the Intel drivers for this particular machine. Okay, so I didn't use the open source driver that's available in the driver manager. Instead, I used the proprietary driver that they have. And that did help it a little bit, but I'm still having these graphical issues. And I really think that's a really huge issue because you can't have your mouse cursor disappearing and weird screen flickers. That is just not a good user experience. And so I think, you know, your your machine it might be different and for the most part Linux drivers there they work on so many different devices so I can't blame it completely on the development because they do have to deal with a lot of different configurations however if you are new to Linux and you do have a driver issue then you know you're gonna have to figure that out okay so that that was a bit of a pain for me okay and the other thing that I noticed, and this really is something that is not a big thing, but it's annoying. I don't know why they did this. If you go into the backgrounds, on previous versions of Linux, you were able to choose backgrounds from different older versions of Linux. And I really, really like having that option, okay? Now, you can only choose wallpapers for Linux Mint 18, which is, you know, I don't know why they would remove that. <laughs> it's just... I don't know why they did it. okay it's just annoying i like having all those wallpapers available they were really really uh beautiful and the other than that those are really the only issues that i have with linux mint 18 okay now in terms of the actual differences about the only differences that i can see from a day-to-day -day basis is that this one it has like nicer animations okay i, I don't even know how to show you but the the animations on here they're a little nicer and you really won't notice that unless you use linux on a regular uh, basis and so that's not something that you're actually going to see uh, just by using linux for the first time and the other difference is under the hood this actually uses a newer version of the linux kernel underneath and so that was different but to be honest, I didn't see any other major differences, okay? It worked just like Linux Mint 17.3. Uh, I didn't really see anything that just stuck out to me. And, you know, if you did explore it more, you probably are going to find other differences. But for the most part, the whole user experience, it's pretty much the same. So overall, Linux Mint 18, another good version of Linux, you know, Linux Mint. I don't want to say great because of those issues that I just mentioned, mainly the whole driver issue, okay? Uh, when I have Linux Mint 17.3 and even before that, I didn't have these driver issues with the graphics that I had. I had an AMD machine before and I also had an Intel. So this is something new, um, but uh, it might not happen to you, but it did happen on this machine. And so other than that, I really did not have anything else to complain about. You know, Linux Mint, once again, they are, to me, uh, the best, most stable, uh, most consistent version of uh, Linux distributions. And at the same time, I still really strongly believe that this is the version to use if you are a first-time Linux user and if you are coming from the Windows world. So that is basically it for this follow-up episode, talking about the installs that I did on these machines and specifically talking about Linux Mint 18. So if you had any comments or thoughts on Linux Mint 18 or just Linux in general, be sure to leave them in the descriptions below. And as always, don't forget that I am on Snapchat at Geek Outdoors. I'll see you on another episode. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.